Shabbat Shalom to everyone. As I mentioned last night, our final Shabbat of this year of 5784. I think fair to say a year ready, many of us are ready to put behind us and move into the new year of 57. And it's in just a few days that we will literally gather to welcome in Rosh Hashanah. And one of the most well-recognized prayers or piyotim that we recite over the course of the High Holy Days at the conclusion of Musaf, uh, at the um, conclusion of the Musaf Amidah on both days of Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur. You already got it. Hayom. Meaning today. And it, yes, it announces the end of the service is near, but it's so much more than that. The message embedded in this beautiful piece of liturgy is deeply meaningful. Originally written as an acrostic, using every letter of the Hebrew language, beginning with Aleph and ending with Tav, like so much of our liturgy that we have, especially over the High Holy Days. However, today, when we recite Hayom, we recite only the first four letters in the, in the language, the middle one, and then the final three letters of the Hebrew language. Every line of this prayer begins with the word Hayom, today. Furthermore, the tune that we use repeats Hayom numerous times, and I could not remember. Uh, Reuben had counted a few years ago. It was a hundred something, and I can't remember the exact number of times we say Hayom today while singing that. But truly emphasizing the meaning of the word today in this incredibly upbeat melody. Each morning of the High Holy Days, we conclude the service by imploring God to strengthen us today, bless us today, exalt us today, inscribe us for a good life today, and lovingly accept our prayers today. We are saying to God, do not wait until tomorrow. Do what we are asking for today. The word Hayom, today, is also very popular in Devarim, in Deuteronomy, in this fifth and final book of the Torah. In fact, it occurs 74 times throughout the book of Deuteronomy, and this morning, 12 times. 12 times in our parsha, we will find the word Hayom. And in fact, the opening line of Nitzavim is Atem Nitzavim Hayom. You stand this day before the Lord your God. And two verses later, to enter into the covenant that God is concluding with you. Hayom. Today. One senses the urgency of Moshe in his final days of leadership and, the, and his life to highlight the significance of each and every day. The Mishnah explains these verses by suggesting two different approaches to the word Hayom, especially noting that our day begins at nightfall. Rabbi Akiva says that the day will darken and it will never return. Rabbi Eliezer, though, takes a more optimistic view by suggesting that it will get dark tonight and that darkness will pass. And tomorrow will be a new dawn, giving new opportunities. The new light gives us a chance to move in the right direction. Well, there is a lot of pressure on the word Hayom today. Rabbi Eliezer reminds us that proper tshuva will not happen in one day. Rather, each day is a chance to take one step closer to be who we hope to become. We are not expected to wake up tomorrow and be totally different people. Not everything can change overnight. At the same time, don't let every day pass you by. Take advantage of each day by constantly moving forward. Just as we ask God not to wait to tomorrow to bless us and to write us in the book of blessing, we too must not wait 
a single day to begin making the changes we know are necessary. This evening, we'll gather to formally welcome in the High Holy Day season with Slichot, writing, singing and announcing those prayers known as our petitions for forgiveness. And one of the key texts that we'll recite tonight, every morning during this week of Slichot, and again on Yom Kippur numerous times, are the 13 attributes of God. Adonai Adonai El Rachum Vichanun, Erech Apaim Barav Chesed Vemet, Notzer Chesed Lalafim, Nose Avon Vafesha, Vichata Vinake. Adonai Adonai God, merciful and compassionate, patient, abounding in love and faithfulness, assuring love for thousands of generations, forgiving, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin and pardoning and granting pardon. We are reminded of God's compassion and mercy every time we recite this, recalling how God responded after the sin of the golden calf. God is waiting to take us back, bless us, but we must take the first step. If we don't delay our work, then we will be worthy of God's blessing, Hayom today. May the next few days be filled with each of us doing the work to feel heard and answered by God each and every day. Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tovah.